that doesn't convert into estrogen or DHT, that doesn't really impact the HBTA or biomarkers that much, and you can put up with the vision issues. Again, S4 is still on the table for a lot of people. What is up everyone, it's Bruce. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907. Check out 1907water.com coupon code Russo. ASMR spritz. You guys want to hear the spritz noise? Intelligent Elephant Carbon. Coupon code Russo. Young LA, all the other discounts and stuff are in the pinned comment down below. Welcome back to Peducation. Today, I am doing a SARM, as Andrew says, I have done too many steroids, and there are so many peds to do that I'm gonna get S4 Andrine out of the way. So GTX 007. I have a lot of experience with this compound, and I have a lot of cool reports with this compound. So please stay to the end where I discuss, you know, what I think of it personally. The medical references, the anabolics 11th edition, where I will go through the history as well as the certain takeaways of S4. So we are not discussing a steroid today, so we do not know the anabolic androgenic reading. However, I will say it's from me playing around with it. Very anabolic, not very androgenic. I don't notice any androgenic side effects. I have tons of females who DM me on Instagram, follow me there at Russo Lifts that play around with S4, have no click gain, whatever. But, and by click gain, I mean enlarged sensitive clitoris or, you know, facial hair growth, voice deepening, any of the masculinization side effects associated with something like a girl taking Winstrol is not the case with the actual physique look vanity change being around the same. Also no hair loss because it doesn't convert into DHT. So S4 Andarine is a second generation SARM. Basically the first gens were pretty crappy. Second gens were still, you know, rough around the edges. The third gens like Austrian really took off, put SARMs on the map in the pharma world and on the underground, right? SARMs are still being researched to this day. S4 was one of those ones where like, wow, you know, we're on to something here. As far as, you know, the side effect profile, I got, you know, the bad rap that I'll get into on the thing that gives S4 such a bad look despite what it does blood work wise. It is primarily in the efficacious dosages studied um, selective towards the skeletal muscle and bone and it goes through the androgen pathway similar to anabolic steroids meaning you know i see a lot of people like oh like we don't know what SARMs do and it's just like it's a synthetic androgen operating down the ar pathway so very similar side effects to the anabolic steroids that have been studied for a century you know you can expect similar side effects results of the ar pathway being fucked with the perks of s4 right off the bat of why they're being studied is Lower HPTA suppression and efficacious dosages. Remember, I'll get into the bodybuilding shit, but it's dosage dependent. You know, Austrian, in my opinion, is a gem of the world that will probably never see its true potential of like one to two migs a day. Everyone would benefit tremendously without, you know, total crash of the HPTA. And then there's obviously bodybuilders are going to take 50 milligrams a day. So let's keep in mind that S4 was developed to not cause prostate growth while replacing androgen level. So you could replace a certain amount of your testosterone, whether you be on HRT or natural testosterone, meaning if you had natural testosterone, your body would still detect something binding to the AR and probably suppress down, not shut off. There's a difference between suppression and shutdown and thus resulting in less overall prostate stimulation because the S4 does not convert to estrogen or DHT and you lowered your natural testosterone and or could lower your HRT dosage causing way less side effects. The other thing and benefit of that is that you are mitigating hair loss extremely by again, cutting the DHT conversion completely out so one of the animal studies on s4 i wanted to highlight is that it has been shown to be only 30 to 40 percent as androgenic as testosterone with a reading 100 100 in animals with that being said it has been shown to be stronger in building bone density at the same time as being less androgenic the whole goal of SARMs were to be the evolution of steroids less side effects especially androgenic and overall less risk hepatoxicity hbta derailment 
all this stuff. This is why SARMs are so heavily studied to this day and are still being pushed through trials. So S4 first hit the scene in 2001 at the University of Tennessee under the development of GTX Pharmaceuticals. Developed for muscle wasting diseases, it was pushed through phase one, made it through phase two, and then was discontinued. And I'll get into why it was discontinued. So it pretty much got stopped in its tracks. And like I said, GTX went back to the drawing board and they decided to pick Austrian and LGD4033 to put their money towards that. Remember, ton of money for development of these compounds. And you know, second gen, they're just like, fuck it. Third gen, Austrian, LGD, much better to fund those. We've learned a lot from this S4, but we need to move on to the third gens, start funding them. Austrian being the most researched in humans and LGD seems to be making it all the way through towards the end of trials. The reason why S4 was stopped, everyone knows this, causes horrible vision side effects. That's why I was stopped. It binds to the AR in the eyes and causes visual disturbances. I've experienced these myself and it's actually funny on the underground. It's used to gauge how strong your s4 is is how bad your vision gets on it to describe this and this is what turns people off because they think it's permanent every time i've used s4 and experienced this it has completely gone away although i can see how you take this one time and you're fucking freaked out forever and gtx notice that cut the funding dumped all the funding into austrian lgd austrian basically the evolution of s4 however s4 really don't impact blood work which i'll get into later in this video which makes it still viable in the underground if you're really about it completely hair safe compound that gives you a crazy winstrol like look that doesn't convert into estrogen or dht that doesn't really impact the hpta or biomarkers that much and you can put up with the vision issues again s4 is still on the table for a lot of people and it's still towed around to this day despite it being discontinued so long ago the visual disturbances for me right everything gets a green yellowish tint Kind of like my blue light glasses, although definitely slightly more green than yellow. And that's not that bad. Everything starts to turn yellow, green. Obviously, the normal person will freak out, stop it. You know, they'll say it ruined it. Like, it always went back to normal for me. There might be instances where it became permanent. I don't know, but for me, the half-life is so short, so estimate around six to 10 hours, completely half-lifed out, boom, my vision went back to normal, went about my day. The problem is though, and this is where I see why GTX defunded it, because I literally got messages on my Instagram that people almost wrecked their motorcycles on S4, almost gone to car wrecks. And it comes from the, when you're in the night and you switch into a bright environment, that switch on S4 takes forever. And that's where it's dangerous. So I remember I would be training in college on S4. And when I entered the gym, I could not see shit for like a solid long minute of me walking to the locker room my eyes took so long to adjust and that's the scary fucking part really the vision tint i didn't really was like oh everyone's complaining about this vision tint because i tried 50 milligrams i got the vision tint and i'm like oh fuck i came off instantly went away started experimenting with it again knowing that the vision was gonna go away for me personally and i pushed the threshold dosage up even higher to the more bodybuilder type abuse levels and i was like like, okay, I can put up with the vision. Then I started getting the fucking, you know, the light to dark switch being so long. And it becomes even more, oh, you're like, oh, you just walk in the gym and it takes a little longer to fucking like see shit. Okay, well, when you're driving or when you're on a motorcycle and these fucking lights are coming at you, that is the big problem because your eye can't auto adjust instantly to that and if you were in a city being blinded by car lights while in the dark looking at the dark i can 100 percent see why that got defunded and why s4 gets a bad rap online but most of you know the sarm 
fear mongering is all SARMs make you go blind. It's this specific compound. Austrian doesn't do this shit at all. That's why Austrian got put on a pedestal because it's almost as good as Austrian in certain ways. It's definitely more liver toxic than S4, but it doesn't cause the visual side effects that S4 does. And it's really not the yellow greenish tint that happens to your eyes. It's it's those visual light to dark changes that really could fuck someone up driving or riding a motorcycle particularly. Because if you're riding a motorcycle, you know that your eyes are looking ahead, scanning back, looking ahead, scanning back. That's how I ride my sport bikes. And I, if I couldn't do that, I never rode my bike on S4 after I heard those stories. But if I couldn't do that, because I constantly look ahead, scan back, look ahead, scan back. And if there are car lights passing, I would not be able to do that. So that's why it gets a bad rap. Now let's go into some positives after I just roasted it. The side effect profile is great on this other than the visual side effects. So low toxicity, low suppression of the HPTA, no real impact on lipids. I mean, if you take RAD140, your lipids get destroyed. Not really the case with S4 and moderate dosages. And there's no hair loss, winstrel like look, no blood pressure increases, no notable biomarker increases. And we'll have the example of shout out Alec. There's his at. He ran S4 with birth control for a year straight, showed me his blood work. His blood work was perfect. And he wasn't doing 25 milligrams a day. I think he went upwards of 175 milligrams milligrams a day and it looked as if he was obviously better than HRT. So he completely replaced his body with this S4 kept the estrogen cream in there didn't have any dht suppression issues and overall tolerated it just fine he got his winstrel like look his hairline remained immaculate that is really cool another really cool report that i've gone is someone who was suffering from prostate growth on hrt he decided and i think this was sent to alec or i read this somewhere so i don't know where this story comes up, but I have this logged in my memory that someone was on HRT, his prostate was growing, didn't want to get off HRT because obviously likes the quality of life benefits of HRT. And once you're on HRT, it's very hard to get off. Decided, lowered his HRT dosage way down, added in the S4, checked his blood work again, his prostate shrunk back to normal and he fell fine and the dosages he used was 25 to 50 milligrams a day which didn't give him visual disturbances i noticed personally if the s4 is accurately dosed and this is another thing about s4 that you gotta know on the underground is that people will call s4 bunk if it doesn't make you go blind it's fucking insane i've talked about it on multiple podcasts and it's encouraged underground companies to be like shit andrew if our shit doesn't make your vision go bad people are gonna go on reddit and they're gonna slander us so we're just gonna instead of 25 mig a mil we're gonna put 25 mega mil on the label and it's gonna be like 75 mega mil and then you're gonna be taking way more than you think you're gonna take and that's where the moral and ethics get fucked up is because people on reddit have been like my s4 is completely fake this other s4 i had i was fucking it was green vision i was hulk vision like all this bullshit on reddit has turned s4 into overdosing the fuck out of all the underground stuff so when i was back in the og days 75 milligrams i started to notice the vision at 125 was problematic at above 150 extremely oh my god i don't want to drive as the arms gained more popularity on the underground 50 milligrams a day started impacting me meaning they were dosing it up because these Raws are not that expensive to jack up the dosage if you want to have the most potent shit. And that's what some of these companies do. Overall, I'm a fan of S4. I will stand behind S4 if you want to put up with the vision shit. As far as impacting biomarkers go, no hepatoxicity, no DHT estrogen conversion, complements HRT very well. Um, we'll crash SHB a little bit um, to increase free testosterone levels if that's a problem with your HRT, with all your testosterone testosterone being bound up it definitely helps with that and it's just been you know a very tried and true compound despite the bad rap it gets and i don't really have anything to say other than that i wanted to go into the administration of them stating 25 to 75 milligrams a day and women usually do lower 
And they say a cycle typically lasts four to eight weeks. Like I said, Alec ran it for a year straight. No toxicity. I wouldn't recommend doing Austrian or LGD or RAD for a year straight. You would definitely have fucked up biomarkers. So Alec really showcased how S4 long term doesn't really impact biomarkers, making it very viable if you want to put up with the vision side effects. I will see you guys in my next video.